Banggood.com once again coming in clutch with the budget friendly mechanical keyboard that ain't bad. This ladies and gentlemen is the Blitzwolf BWKB1, a $50 mechanical keyboard which you might notice is wireless, hello. These days it's becoming increasingly easy to find mechanical keyboards, especially on websites like banggood.com, which provided this keyboard for review by the way. It's becoming increasingly easy to find keyboards out there that check all of these boxes that are important to a lot of people. RGB, Bluetooth capable, 60%, and one of the most important things is budget friendly. And so today I have a keyboard for you that is under $50 by a penny. I mean, it's still under, right? Yes, the Blitzwolf BWKB1 is $49.99, and it's got a lot going on for it, especially at that price. If you're not familiar with Blitzwolf, which I wasn't either until I looked them up when making this video, they make various accessories for your PC. And we're not really just talking keyboards, we're talking about all kinds of things. USB hubs, even RGB LED strips. So for a company like that to put out a keyboard like this, how well can it really perform? Inside the box, you're of course going to find the keyboard, the instruction manual, a long and actually pretty quality looking and sleek white USB-C cable, and a wire keycap puller. Once again, these budget mechanical keyboards come with the good keycap pullers, so you gotta hand it to companies like Blitzwolf for throwing in that keycap puller. Speaking of keycaps, the one that come with this are okay. I'm not crazy about the font. Uh, I'm the kind of person that's sort of become picky when it comes to fonts on keyboards. There are just some out there that look nicer and cleaner than others and this one it looks fine it doesn't look like super gamery like a lot of budget Amazon mechanical keyboards will but I have seen better especially on other keyboards I've reviewed on this channel they are ABS keycaps which is not my preference but for ABS these are not bad I have the white version this also comes in a black version I really like how clean the white version looks and I have been using it almost exclusively for about the past three or four weeks now and yet it still looks clean despite me being a gross chubby gamer boy who eats at his desk sometimes. It has side printed legends for the secondary functions, which I actually do prefer over top printed secondary legends. Most of the keyboards I have actually have side printed secondary legends. It's becoming more and more common, and I think it just looks cleaner than having all the characters jumbled on to the top of the keycap. I really like the floating key design that this keyboard has. Floating keyed keyboards have become sort of a mixed bag for me. I have come to prefer the opposite, I forgot what it's called, but where you can't see the key switches underneath the keycaps. With this one, as you can see, you can see the key switches. They are right there for the world to behold. I think it helps that the keycaps basically go to the edge of the keyboard so you don't have a huge base plate sticking out from the bottom, which can look okay. I have seen keyboards look good like that, but I just really like how clean and minimal this one looks. This does come in three different Gateron switch options. There is the linear red, the tactile brown, and the clicky blue. This is the red switch version because I just, I'm not a big fan of clicky switches because I just don't like all the noise they make and linear just feels nice and smooth and just, I, I like it. I do like how typing feels and sounds on this keyboard though it's sort of a higher pitch typing sound. It's not my preference. I prefer like the thockier, bassier typing sounds like I've experienced on the On Pro 2 and the Echo 3068 which I have back here but uh, I do like how it sounds. Sometimes a higher pitch sound is pleasing it sounds a little bit like a like a rain stick or just i, I don't know it, it sounds cool but it's just it's not my preference here's a sound test
Now, one really cool thing that I want to mention is that this is a 60% keyboard. It is the same size as other 60% keyboards I have here, like the On Pro 2 and the GK61, but it actually has dedicated arrow keys. Not like the On Pro 2 where it had the tap feature by turning certain keys into arrows by tapping, but these, as you can see, are actual dedicated built-in arrow keys, and that is awesome. Anytime you can have arrow keys integrated just there, make it easy to tap those arrow keys, especially on a smaller form factor it's it's just refreshing and it just makes things easier for everyone uh, except maybe not so easy on this keyboard because it has a question mark on the other side of the up arrow which I hate actually before I even got into reviewing keyboards my first 60% keyboard that I ever purchased was the one from Diaria I think it's called I think they've moved on and become Kemu Kemu uh, this name here but yeah they're Diaria 60% keyboard I bought for like $45 on Amazon like a year year or two ago and it had the question mark on this side of the arrow key and I hated it and I still hate it but I will say that I have been using this long enough to get used to it a little bit I do occasionally tap it by mistake and that kind of sucks but uh, you know it happens another thing to keep in mind is if you do decide to purchase new keycaps for this so you want to replace them get some nice pretty colored keycaps or just maybe like a different material or form factor uh, pro profile then you are going to have to keep in mind that not only do you have to accommodate for the smaller shift key but also the alt and function keys here are also smaller because of the arrow keys being there I also like that this is sort of a lower profile keyboard in comparison to for for example the on pro 2 I don't know if I mentioned it in that video but one thing that I wasn't super in love with when it came to the on pro 2 was how high it is going toward the back of the keyboard it's not a bad thing but just to avoid wrist pain I like to have my keyboards as low as possible so if they have adjustable legs for example I always leave the legs down and have the keyboard as flat as possible but this one is actually pretty low probably one of the lowest I have though it does have adjustable legs so if you do want it higher you do have that option of popping these bad boys out and then there you go, you're set, you're good, you're ready to go. A word of warning, as I did mention, this is a Bluetooth capable keyboard and it has a weird Bluetooth toggle function that I haven't experienced on a keyboard before. So if you pick this thing up and it's not working when you plug it into your computer, don't panic, you probably didn't get one that's defective. Just hold function and hit the tab key to switch from Bluetooth to plugged in mode, I guess it might be called, and that will make it so that it does function while it's plugged into your computer otherwise if you don't do that it just won't register any key presses and I, I've never seen that and it totally threw me off in the back of the keyboard there is the Bluetooth toggle now unfortunately we get to a problem that I had with this keyboard and that is the Bluetooth I could not get it to function at all I made sure I looked in the instructions I looked up the support on Blitzwolf's website and I was doing everything correctly but for some reason it would not connect to my computer my iPad or my iPhone I think it could just be a problem I was having with my particular unit because I did look it up I peeked at a couple other videos on this keyboard just to see if maybe I was doing something wrong with the Bluetooth connection and the people that I saw connected to their devices were doing exactly what I did and it just connected like that so I do think maybe I just have a slightly defective unit I did make sure it was in Bluetooth mode obviously I made sure it was on and it wasn't plugged in and it's charged it just was not connecting to any of my devices so you know if you get one just make sure that if you plan to test the Bluetooth or even if you don't you might need it someday test it out right away so you know if it works or not and if that way if it doesn't you can reach out to whoever you need to to get that resolved there is also software that is mentioned on the product page as well as the manufacturers web page for this keyboard but I could not find it anywhere there weren't even links on the manufacturers website which was weird I actually found people asking about it on reddit and somebody posted the link and that link was dead then somebody was like oh no here it is here's the new link and then that link was dead too so I, I just I could not find the software to test out for you guys sorry all that being said though I feel like this keyboard is fine without the software the only reason you would really need the software is if you want to create different profiles that you can store on the onboard memory because being that this is a Bluetooth keyboard you can take your settings your lighting presets your preferences with you on the go on all your different devices you might connect to so possibly defective Bluetooth on my unit 
and missing software aside, what do I think of this keyboard overall? I think it's really impressive. For $49.99, you are getting a mechanical keyboard that comes with Gateron switches, which a lot of people kind of prefer over even Cherry MX switches, decent stock ABS keycaps, a clean minimalistic floating key design, and arrow keys that are just there on the keyboard. I mean, all that considered, you're getting a pretty amazing keyboard. On Amazon, for example, if you look for a keyboard that has all of these specs, you're probably gonna be paying more than this keyboard costs. Mechanical keyboards are getting better and better out there at a lower price, but just in my experience browsing Amazon, there aren't really keyboards quite like this one at this price. I could not find this keyboard on Amazon, but I have seen other similar keyboards to this one, and they either had like just worse keycaps or just worse switches. And look, yes, I know I am a Banggood affiliate and I do get a little bit of money if you guys buy through my links, but even if I was not a Banggood affiliate or I was talking about another product that is not on Banggood but still had the same pricing differences, in a lot of my reviews I talk about what is good for your budget. Because I know not everybody out there has all the money in the world to buy expensive keyboards, or maybe you do but you don't want to spend that much. So for $50, I think it is definitely worth a pickup. It's not my favorite keyboard that I've used but I also have the luxury that a lot of people don't have of being sent these keyboards for review but if you don't and you've got a lower budget to spend on a quality keyboard I think this one is gonna be one for you to check out affiliate links in the description from Banggood if you do want to check out this keyboard or any of the other links that they have provided for me in the description and if you want to check out any other videos I have a keyboard video here and then I'll have something totally different here because I do cover other things other than tech so maybe you want to check that out. I'm out of here. It's a toasty morning. Peace out. Thanks for watching.